Hello everybody, welcome to Le Tour de France Season 2019. We're going to do a let's play here. We're going to play through the Tour de France. So we will pick that. And we're going to go with the professional custom because I made some edits to names and stuff and rosters to make sure like guys like Chris Froome who aren't going to participate in this year's Tour de France due to injury are not in here. So here we go. Alright, so for this, we are going to select Team Bora. Of course, my boy, Peter Sagan on there. We're going to go for the green jersey. and me Technical difficulties there for a little bit. Uh, I'm sorry. But either we're going to go with the green jersey with Peter Sagan, or we're going to go for the yellow or polka dot jersey with Emmanuel Buckman. So we'll see how it goes. Do not alter the team. No need. And stage one. Beautiful Belgium. That's where the grand depart is. Here's the route. From Bruxelles to Brussels, 192 Hi guys. Welcome to the briefing kilometers. for this first stage. So the main thing to grasp we... today is the... Oh. Now, for this, we're not going to do the whole thing, because I am not going to ride 193 kilometer bike race. We'll skip around a little bit, do what's important. Um, there's the favorites, Peter Sagan, us, Arnaud Demar, and Ilya Viviani from Team Quick Step. So he's a big sprinter, so is Fernando Gaviria. Um, those are options, of course. Alexander Kristoff, Marcel Kittel on his good day, could be up there. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Grand Depart so of the 2019 go. Tour de France. Setting out from the Belgian capital, and by the Brussels, way, Team C, this Grand Depart celebrates the 50th nice anniversary of the first really. yellow jersey claimed by Eddie Merckx. That's a uh, five times winner of the Tour de France. They didn't have the if the stage does take to some of the roads commonly used else. during the Flanders Classics, like with a notable black, passage up the Capel Moor, we can still expect to see the sprinters fighting bad. it out for victory it's today. Not bad. To, uh, to them for that. Here we are, starting off and we'll wait for the break of the and the cows there, it's past the Barry Marita. And there is the Team Minimus rider, Jonathan Castro-Vieja, number 15, right next to us. Great time trial is to the teammate, Johnny Moscow. Our teammate, former national champion, Marcus Burkhardt, number 175. And there is a sprinting rival of ours, Fernando Gaviria, 131. Here's a GC, general classification contender. Jakob Fugel saying, definitely got to watch out for him in the mountains. Never finished top five in a grand tour before. But a lot of them consider, a lot of people consider him a favorite for this year. There's Nairo Quintana, always dangerous, number one. Rishi Port, 81. And Thibaut Pino, number 41. All for the long standings contenders. There's one of the Yates with some Simon. A lot of overlap contenders right now. Gotta wonder where number 11 would be. That's Gary Thomas. Last year is my ocean one. The yellow jersey, which means you have won the Tour de France. But we're just gonna go for the Sagan for the green jersey here, which is the sprinter jersey. And this is one of our biggest adversaries right there, number 111, Dylan Grunewagen. Brandon Gaviria, we already mentioned. And there is Team Quickstep in the blue there, the 70s. And they are going to be working for their sprinter who might be up there right now. No, it's a UAE rider. They will work for their sprinter, Ilya Viviani, who is a former teammate of Peter Sagan, the Slovakian champion, former world champ. Miss those rainbow kits around Sagan's shirt. So, waiting for the break, waiting for the 
smaller teams gonna head out and try to get those KOM points. Um, looks like Evil Empire coming to the front, but he'll be just working for Team Quick Step. He's the Belgian national champion. somebody to break off from the peloton so we can start doing some uh, simulating here. Who is gonna, what team is gonna send their guy out to the breakaway? Archaea, maybe? They got some guys in here. Yeah, I'm not sure they really have a sprinting threat. Maybe, is Andre Greipel on that team? He might be, so that makes sense. Um, oh, there's a rider for Kofidis. They will definitely have somebody in the breakaway today. Not really much else going for them. Rather than their two sprinter attack, Christopher Laporte and Nasser Bouhani, the Frenchman. Even though they really have not found themselves with much success in the Tour de France in the past. So who is going to break away from the peloton? They're waiting a while. Looks like Alexander Kristoff moving to the front. Still no breakaway. Yeah. You're afraid of a board duel or what? Saying my thoughts exactly. No one wants to break away, huh? Primoz Roglic, number 112. That is a big overall contender right there. He can do a lot of stuff, and he is willing to take many risks on the descents. He was a former Olympic ski jumper, actually, Primoz Roglic, the Slovenian rider. I am so surprised at the lack of a break so far. I'm surprised no one went. Oh, TDE told Direct Energy to some new uh, kids to zoom. So we're going to do a little bit of fast forwarding to see who breaks away. No one yet. We got a break away. It's Gruzdev from Team Astana. So we'll let him go out there and we're going to go to the cl uh, cobbled climb. So the break away is remote. The peloton is caught oh, up. Uh, There's no more escapees. Back. So we have a rider from Direct Energy, Kofidis. One and a half minutes for the breakaway. It might just work. All smaller teams in the Tour de France. The riders are approaching the Capelmoor. If you see that green, white, red jersey, and a mythical that's the Italian often... national champion. A guy definitely to watch out for. That is the... Italian national champion and great, great sprinter Ilya Viviani. Now, an interesting thing about this is there could definitely be a break off here in the peloton. The cobblestones are do not come easy for some of these guys. Peter Sagan is very good on the cobbles, but other guys might not be and might honestly crack on this little time. The Bosberg is a fairly short hill, only 800 meters. There's yeah, one so point to be gleaned by the first after. rider to reach the top. Surprised to see somebody fall off the back of the peloton here. And of course, hit R1 to get the aerodynamics that helps regain energy pretty quickly. And I believe, yeah, there's a big break off. Nairo Quintana is in the break off. He got for now. Rigoberto Uran, Gary Thomas. So there's a big, or at least there's a considerable group that has fallen out of the peloton. We should get Oz back here. Yeah, I don't want him to go out. We need everybody we can for the sprint launch. I'm surprised one of the GC teams aren't doing anything. It's Nairo in the back. Who was that, Lopez? Miguel Angel Lopez from Astana, great climber. Andre Greipel's off the back. That's a good sprinter. Caleb Ewan, way, way off the back. If he loses After a lot these of time, stone hills, that could be potentially the bad for that classics, team because he's the one of their only hopes on it. Water should settle down with the sprinters' getting a handle on events in order to set up a mass so sprint go finish up. in the streets of Brock. To the, uh, about five or so Ks to the intermediate sprint. And hopefully we can get a good amount of points there. We can only really get 
points for the peloton is riding hard. Stay fifth well or sixth placed. place, depending on how we catch everybody. So who's off the, the back? The breakaway is losing ground. Caleb Ewan way off the back, but they're really working to get back up to the peloton. They probably will. It's a 25-man group. But you gotta be, you gotta consider that Caleb Ewan might be very, very tired after working to get well, back up to the peloton. Well, on flat stages, that's not where you see the most Excuse trap. me. So you can accelerate forward might not be as competitive in the sprint or definitely the intermediate sprint. So, the biggest sprinter in the field this flat year. Flat stages. Little wonder that they're not shown in their entirety on TV. In stage one, which is a great Time opportunity. difference between the peloton and the breakaway is steady. Flat stage. A the breakaway is losing there ground. With the cobbles and the reclines, but not really an issue for these sprinters. There will be a big issue soon, stage six actually. It's the first mountain stage. The of rider Tour de will soon year, be believe, competing for the first intermediate guy, sprint. The group right in front of us, we should oh, get him. It will give us a chance to see the men who sprint. harbor ambitions for the points classification. So we will try to get up to Minari and. Uh, be able to get 11 points here. I'm pretty confident that we can win the intermediate sprint in the peloton. Well, we know Ilya Viviani will be going for it. The Frenchman Arnaud de Mer, number 42 there. Gaviria, 131. Viviani, 71. That's him. right next to us. Andre Greipel is here, number 212 for Team Arkea. We are 2.6 Ks away from the intermediate sprint. We just want to get out in front. Usually if we get the jump on other people. Here's the winner of the intermediate sprint. Really the the breakaway so is upping the tempo at the end of the race. It doesn't intend in to be caught up that easily. And we're going to go right about now. We got blocked off by an FTJ round. I believe his name is Sinkledon. So we went earliest, which is probably the best way to go, honestly. We'll have enough energy to make it to the Watch end. out! So You're not going to be able to no attack problem. much longer. Take the intermediate sprint for our for the Peloton. Sunny Cold Rally gets sixth, seventh Andre Greipel, eighth the Dutchman Dylan Grunewagen, ninth Arnaud de Mer, tenth Michael Matthews, eleventh Ilya Viviani, and the sprinter Caleb Ewan, fourteenth, twelve, thirteen. All right, Christopher Laporte got fifteenth, another sprinter. But some of the guys that got sprint points here didn't even sprint; they just are out near the front working for their guys in the peloton. The overall guys, of course, for the yellow jersey standings. All right, so. Now, Rain Tower may fall off the back, Team Direct Energy. So let's simulate to about 25 Ks to go. So we can get. Actually, we'll do the cobbles. Now cobbles it's a are always fun, especially when you're Peter Sagan, because he might be the best. Far from the him. finish, it should not make a significant impact on the race. Greg Van Avermaet, John Degenkolb, some of the best riders on the cobbles in the world. Yeah, great stuff. Tony Martin's pretty good too. He won a stage in like the 2015 or 2016 Tour de France after breaking away on the cobbles. There's Nairo Quintana's definitely staying to the front for his overall reasons. Rigoberto Uran, number 31, for EF Education first. The overall guys made sure they were near the front on the cobbles in case there was a little split. Number 11, last year's Tour de France winner, Garant Thomas, definitely will be a guy to watch out for in the mountains. We're going to be pushing with Emmanuel Buckman up in the mountains. All right, now it's time to go to about 25 Ks remaining and uh, get ready to finish off the stage. Which it should be a thrilling stage finish. The breakaway is losing ground. I believe it's a little bit uphill to the line, not The gap is much, decreasing, so guys. The peloton should be the there for the stage win. sprinters like Marcel Kittle might not point be to be gleaned in play, at the top of this last but climb. guys like me, Peter Sagan, the riders are entering the feed zone. They'll be able to pick up something to eat, and we'll see them through the final 50 kilometers. I need to stop giving myself a grammar lesson, but Caleb Ewan's going to be up there. Honestly, wouldn't be surprised to see Van Avermaet, and I'm not sure if this is really one for Ilya Viviani. I will be surprised if he does really, really well. 
The head of the race is one and a half minutes lead on the peloton. Probably the best sprinter in the world, in my opinion. The gap is decreasing, guys. I don't. The peloton should be there for the stage win. So about 25 k's to go. Let's hope Bora decides to work with us. I don't want to work with anybody. I don't think that we should be doing anything in the peloton. I think that Mia Sagan, they, he did it when he was on tank off, when everybody on tank off was protecting Al Alberto Contador. I think we should just ride it out here and uh, get on the teams. Well, probably the quick step team, honestly. They are definitely a strong lead out team. A lot of Sudal is a strong lead, off t a lead out team. But I'm not sure if they're going to be full force for Caleb U, and they should be, because they don't really have an overall gun. But I assume to see Quick Step at the front of the Peloton here. And I would express the FDJ for Arno Demare up there. And uh, La or, uh, Yumbo Visca, what are they called now? Yumbo Visma. Yeah, Yumbo Visma. I would be surprised to see them working for their sprinter, Dylan Grunewagen. Another 20 so I like where we're at. And it's looking good right for now. the breakaway. The Peloton shouldn't uh, manage to make up the deficit before the finish. Alpecin working for Marcel Kittel. And the quick step, guys. Last so time checked with a breakaway. One Elliot minute. Viviani. There's an AG2R. The Mondial guy probably up near the front just to protect the overall contender from that team. Those of overall guys, of course, are probably the best in the mountains, usually. But, you know, some people can surprise in the Tour de France. Not the best climbers have won in the past. Like, Bradley Wiggins was not the best climber, but he could do it, and he won the Tour de France. But then Chris Froome stole the thunder at what was formerly called Team Sky. And now Gary Thomas holds the reins after Chris Froome got injured in a... Uh, uh, practice run for a time trial at the Criteria du Dauphiné earlier this go, year. And there's a lot of Sudal rider, I believe. Maybe UAE, I'm not sure. Their kits look definitely similar. I have to go up and check if, to make Come sure. On guys. We're trying to stay well positioned yeah, sure at the front of the Sudal with the belt. Yeah, a lot of Sudal right there. And there's UAE Emirates. They look exactly the same. And there's a big sprinter, Caleb Ewan, up to the front of the peloton here, which is definitely 30 a good seconds place lead for, for the head of the race. The farther up you are now, the better off you'll be. Uh, I would assume UAE is working for their two guys, which are Fernando Gaviria and Alexander Kristoff. But Kristoff could honestly just be in like a lead-out role here for the stronger of the two. Oh, excuse me, I'm tired. Fernando Gaviria won a few stages in the last year's Tour de France. He really was a big breakout rider. Louis Mankey's the young South African climber who's fallen off the back as you see on the side of the screen. In the second, off the back group, one that we have leaders. He probably will not lose that much time. I think that the Peloton should slow down just a little bit right after we catch him. But then it will definitely be sped up. I'm not sure if I'm planning on watching a sprint or what. But if not, I will just stay. The riders are all back together. Quick step. Everything will be played out in the final Nobody kilometers. Nobody really wants to gun it now, except UAE going up near the front for their man. Watch the demeanor of the other sprint. Team Trek. No that's such a If you start too soon, you'll be unable to continue your effort to the line. He's going to be a guy that will finish about top late, 10 every sprint stage. Not have time to work your way to the front. Not really one to contend with on the f absolute flat. But he definitely can win a stage with a little bit of an uphill finish. Him, him and us. As Peter Sagan right now are definitely the two best in that category. Maybe that's Tony Martin. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if Tony Martin is on Team Yellow Lizzie this year. I know he was on Patricia Alves last year. Got hurt. He 
Geneva and Perth. Great, great lead out there at the Belgian national champion. It's only five kilometers left here. Just five more kilometers. Get ready to sprint. We Love need to score points for the green jersey. This would be a nice place for a little time for our life. Great scenery. Nice place for the fans. So we're just on Evelyn Paris wheel, and we got cut off by the quick step rider, so we might lose a bit. Ground. Three no, kilometers for the penalty. The, the, the sprint. So is our inevitable. goal is to be in front of all the sprinters. So when we go, we are the first one going. push a little bit right before the 1k sign so we might not have as much stamina and here the we go the sprint has been launched we are off go. it's a tiny One bit uphill Give i'm not sure if got. anybody's going to have enough for us here it's a hike up here do we have enough i think we do we will win stage Watch one of the tour de france one cool thing about this edition of the game is you get to see the replay of the winner at the end. So we can see how close everyone was to us coming to the finish line. Here we are, let's slow it down just a little bit. Sprinting our tail off. There's Ilya Viviani, right behind us. Caleb Ewan, Dylan Grunewagen, Zach Gaviria, and Nason from AG2R, really got into the fray here, Arnaud Demare. Greg Van Avermaet, Caleb Ewan cracked before the line, he had no chance. Second, it was close. It's going to be Nason, Demare, Gaviria, looks like Demare got second. It was a real close bunch here at the end. But we win and time to go to the podiums. He is all smiles as he climbs onto the podium. Applaud him. Here is the winner of the inaugural stage of this Tour de France, Peter Sagan. Congratulations to him. He really was the strongest. He fully deserves this prestigious victory. He tops the standings and will receive the traditional honors. Here's the yellow jersey of this Tour de France. It is a moment that he soon won't forget and which marks his career. Come on, let's applaud him once more. We can say that everything is going well for him at the moment. Here's the green jersey of this Tour de France. Get that green jersey. Let's hope for his sake that things go as well in the future, but for now, he can relish the moment. He will climb onto the podium to receive his jersey. And the and the 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 is a so that is good for them. The Here's the polka dot jersey of this tour de France. He will be able to hang this jersey in his trophy room. Let's hope for him that he can add more. And the white jersey. He will climb onto the podium to receive his jersey and a kiss from the hostesses. Here's the white jersey of this Tour de France. Fernando Gaviria. It is a moment that he soon won't forget and which marks his career. Come on, let's applaud him once more. Well done, so, lads. Congratulations to you. There we go. We will we were save amongst the outsiders, race. but you managed to beat the favorites. And, uh, well done we for this win. Sagan. We hit the ground running, and tomorrow Good we'll work. have the honor Team of defending Bora. the yellow jersey. Arnaud Demare, second. Olivier Nason, third. Ilya Viviani, fourth. Fernando Caviria, fifth. How about Mikhail Kwiatkowski on uh, Ferenios in sixth. Seventh, Dylan Grunewagen. Eighth, Greg Van Avermaet. Ninth, Caleb Ewan, 
11, Michael Matthews, another good sprinter. Andre Greipel, 14th, and the uh, favorite to win the Tour de France, Garrett Thomas, 17th. So, that's it for this edition, stage one of this year's Tour de France. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.